The chair recognizes the gentleman from New Hampshire, Mr. Pappas, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm honored to say this is the first time that I've addressed my constituents and my colleagues from the floor of this House. Under normal circumstances, I'd be talking about creating new jobs and new opportunities for my constituents in New Hampshire. I'd be talking about plans to rebuild our roads and bridges, to step up our response to the opioid crisis. I'd be sharing and discussing ideas and proposals that can improve people's lives and move America forward. But today's circumstances in this brand new Congress are anything but normal. Instead of talking about how we can reform government, I'm here to plead with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to simply reopen government. Mr. Speaker, today marks day 20 of the shutdown. After nearly three weeks without a paycheck, federal employees across the country are grappling with how they'll pay their rent, their mortgage, and their utility bills. They're anxious about putting food on the table and providing for their kids. With no end in sight, thousands of workers in my state of New Hampshire are facing tough questions. What if the shutdown lasts months or even years as this president has threatened? What will that mean for their savings, for their jobs, and for their families? Will they be forced to leave federal service simply to stay afloat? The treatment of our dedicated federal workers is completely unacceptable. As someone who operated a family business with 230 workers, I can tell you that shutting your doors and cutting off pay for your employees is no way to run a business. It's certainly no way to run the greatest country on earth. Mr. Speaker, this is the people's house. So today I'm lifting up the stories of everyday Granite Staters who are suffering because of this senseless shutdown. I'm here on behalf of a furloughed IRS worker from Sandown. Her bank is denying her the interest-free loan they promised federal workers because the furlough letter the IRS gave her was too vague. And of course, there's no one around at the IRS to write her a new one. I'm here on behalf of an air traffic controller from Derry who just transferred airports and has been told she may not get the back pay because she was furloughed prior to starting her new assignment. And I'm here on behalf of an FAA worker from Hampton who's being forced to take unpaid leave to look after his wife who's going through a health emergency. He's worrying about how he can possibly care for his spouse without knowing when his next paycheck is going to arrive. These workers from my district deserve better from our nation's leaders, and so do each and every one of the American people. This fall, voters sent an unmistakable message. The way Washington works simply isn't working for them. They want less drama and dysfunction, more compromise and more common sense. They want leaders who will put the national interest before their own partisan political interest. Instead of business as usual in Washington, it's time for Washington to start operating more like a responsible business that looks out for its workers. That means ending the shutdown now and making sure all of our outstanding federal employees and contractors are fully compensated. We've got to do better. For the sake of the more than 2,400 federal workers in New Hampshire who are currently furloughed or working without pay, and the more than 800,000 across this country, let's close this dark chapter by immediately reopening the doors of your government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back.